Hello everyone, welcome back to Ray Zero Space and Kerbal Space Program 2, where I'm continuing the construction of my moon base. Though this isn't exactly a moon base module, though it's got a pretty big habitat in the back there. It is a really obnoxious rover. It is making a contribution to moon base by basically being there, I guess. But the goal was to test out the really big wheels. I mean, obviously. And, uh, well, this is what I came up with. I've called it the snail because of the original body. Before I put the wheels on, it looked like a snail, so I went with that. I decided for this uh, look with the reactor, the reactor obviously powering the wheels, but it sort of looks like a drilling unit. So maybe it's like a moon driller or something, but of course it's not a drill, it's a reactor, but let's set that aside for now. Anyway, we're using spark engines here, and the center of uh, mass and center of thrust look like that right now. Um, we don't have any supplementary reaction wheel, though the reaction wheel in the rover cabin was pretty darn good before, but this is much, much heavier, so uh, maybe this is too much and we should add a reaction wheel, I don't know. But let's take it outside to the runway and see how things go. Like that. Alright, well... It hasn't immediately fallen apart, that's good. I was wondering whether I should add some struts to something or another. It's certainly not the best accelerating vehicle ever. I'm wondering right now whether... Oh, it's, it's gotten pretty fast. I'm wondering whether these actually steer or not. But I can't see them turn, so I'm not sure. I, I wonder if it's just the reaction wheel turning it right now. Let's see. Steering enabled. Traction level. Um, the spring strength. Let's increase those to max. That doesn't seem to do anything r r right now. Ooh, the uh, the reactor wiggles. That's great. Of course, these changes won't be applied to the one in the VAB. Right now, right now, steering appears to be reversed, and well, now it's at least matching what I'm trying to do with the keys, as you can see from there. Uh, oh, I didn't notice those thrusters are actually a little bit too far out. Gotta try and get over there and see if there's any random happenings like we had with the previous rover. It's looking partially unfilled because there's a tank here that I didn't fill. The one attached to the reactor. Only this tank is filled. I don't know exactly where its center mass is, whether they actually adjust it for the fact that it's a weird shape or not. I'm guessing no. But anyway, I just put the sparks based on where our overall center of mass is. But if it turns out that the center of mass of this is actually a little bit further back, that could throw us off as fuel drains. Otherwise, I the part of the reason why we have the reactor like this is to counterbalance the mass of the cabin in the back. On the launch version, I'll probably have a controller on top so that we can control from that when we use the thrusters. Obviously it has the fuel so it can land on its own. Though honestly, I, I didn't know how to attach this cabin to that part with anything else other than this fuel tank. Nothing else seemed to look satisfactory. Oh, it had a little tweak. Do you see that? That, that was just like the one previous. Wow, 30 meters per second though. How fast can we go with this? Here. Obviously on the moon that's gonna be different. 40. I know people have land speed records and all that. I'm not in that business but uh, I'm, dr I'm driving all around because I can hardly steer. Well we got this far so far. Back to the VAB and the tower. 50. Oh, see, every now and again there's these weird little tweaks. That If, if that's uh, because of the world, then it's possible that... Oh, now we're slowing down a lot. I'm still trying to accelerate. Well, we were like sloped down and that was helping us, and now we've sloped up. 
But anyway, if the world if world has these little things in it, that'll cause problems for an around Kerbin ground trip. Well, we're running out of land, so. Okay, let's see our breaking. We got to 50-ish. No, breaking is as slow as you'd expect, though we could increase the breaking power too. Mm, breaking power. More breaking power. Oh no! Uh... Oh no, we're on a downslope. It can't stop itself. Okay, and that's a good, important piece of information. <laughs> uh, we're not able to steer or stop on downslopes very well. Though, on the moon, it's completely different after all. Okay, I'm curious what's going to happen when we hit water, actually. Jebgar. Uh-oh. Uh oh, we're toppling over. Huh? Oh, we lost the reactor. Okay, well, it's done. So, we're not a very good boat. Alright, let's uh, revert. So we'll take it, we'll try it out, and let me put it on a launcher and see how that goes. Obviously this is a very obnoxious thing to try to launch, and we're going to need an especially obnoxious launcher. Okay, so this is what I've cooked up, and we'll start from the top, but obviously there's a lot to talk about. Uh, I have decided to tuck the rover in a fairing, I don't know whether that's a good idea or not, but, you know, it depends on how the game actually calculates drag. We could test that, we could try to launch it without the fairing and with a fairing. The rover's surface area is fairly low compared to the fairing, uh, but it does have some open nodes, but there's no guarantee that the fairing actually obscures those nodes, I don't know. I like the nodes at the bottom of the sparks and on the top of the controller, so, yeah. And then the wheels could have a whole other bunch of drag all on their own, that's really crazy. Anyway, I decided to tuck it into a fairing, and then make the launcher that we have below, which is... Uh, well, it's got two rows of parachutes, so it's obviously recoverable. And then, in order to... partly to counterbalance the parachute's mass, but also to counterbalance the pressure from the fairing, uh, we have these fins. They are just stabilizers, because I don't trust wings anymore in this game. <laughs> so we're using stabilizers, they don't fall off. Okay, they don't fall off, that is very important to me. And we're not using any struts. And the mass of the landing gear plus the mass of these stabilizers should be balancing the mass of the parachutes. Uh, not that that's strictly necessary. Um, the mass of the tank and the engines is way higher. But it's probably a good thing. And of course we needed the fins anyway for the fairing, and I think this is a good enough arrangement. Uh, if we take a look at it, it's like that right now. So it depends on how you look at that, but at least we'll be going up and not toppling over immediately. So, yeah. The, we have nine vector engines. Uh, another problem is that they don't really get us up very fast. So the drag is going to be formidable, and we're going to lose some delta V like that. So it should probably go a little bit steeper. Uh, we've got 4,664 it says there, but I don't know if it's telling the truth or not, but we don't have any weird staging, we don't have any boosters or anything like that, so it's probably right. In which case, the goal is that this launcher not only gets us into orbit, but also trans transfers us most of the way to the moon before bringing itself back down into Kerbin's atmosphere for recovery. So it's ambitious, let's see how it goes. Okay, nothing exploding immediately on the pad, readjusting the camera. We're not rotated the way I would like. I'll probably do that during the launch. And let's go. And off we go. Okay. Yep, it's not going up very fast, but uh, that means I can probably roll very quickly here. Into the orientation I want. I'm going with heads down. I don't know whether that's the right thing to do or not, but it's better than being sideways, that's for sure. 
I think I'll start now. A little bit wobbly. The vector is still being on one side does not help. We certainly don't want to go too far away from the prograde vector with this, since the drag is already pretty bad. And that'll be exposing more surface area. If the game actually calculates things like that, I am at risk of overthinking things. But, but then people then blame me for not overthinking things. But then again, this is stock, so I don't know how much it's actually doing properly. <laughs> I have no idea. It usually, uh, stock KSP doesn't usually take a lot of things into consideration, frankly speaking. I know at least one person will be proud of me for this fearing. It's shown that I've grown in a stock way. Well, uh, it's pretty good right now. I think, I think we're okay. He said to the Kraken, but, um... We'll uh, see whether we have enough Delta V. It's looking okay on the Delta V as well. It doesn't seem like it's light or anything so far. I thought about actually putting a lot of boosters on the side of it to sort of make it look uh, a little bit more solid, right? Instead of having a thin body and then a huge top. But we just didn't need the fuel. The payload isn't that heavy. It's just bulky. Might be that I've got just the right amount here for what I wanted this to do. I'll get the apoapsis to 100 kilometers, then dump the fairings. Okay. Fairing set. Just for safety's sake, even though they don't seem to have any physical relevance. It's just a good policy. Uh, reaction wheel... Sure doesn't turn, or reaction wheels, sure don't turn this very quickly, but that's fine. In a pinch, we can use the engines. Hope the rover sparks. I mean, it's tough to see that the sparks are going to be super maneuverable compared to, like, the twitches, which have eight degrees of gimbling. The sparks only have three. And this rover cabin is bearing a lot more mass now as far as its reaction wheel is concerned. There is also a reaction wheel in the controller on the top there. Now there's looking like some sort of space sea creature or something. We should have more space sea creatures. I think that's a good motif. Okay, completing orbit. Alright, that's good enough. Alright, we have 773. A little bit less than I wanted. But, they'll do. Oh, the wheels are spinning. Um, okay, well that's fine. They can spin. I guess. I hope that's not a sign of anything. But, let's go over to the moon. Again, this wasn't meant to get all the way to the moon. Because, well, it's supposed to come back down into Kerbin's atmosphere anyway, so... The rover will have to do some of it. The rover has 2,000 meters per second, so we only need to reserve 1,200 for landing at most. That's for a precise landing and me just wanting some margin there. Alright, that takes 845 right there. But we'll reserve 100 in the launcher for its return. And of course, decoupling it's going to be an interesting thing. Will it survive that? We're currently controlling from its controller, so we'll have to switch to the rover's controller and hope that that goes alright. And I'm probably not going to use all the thrust, so let's turn to the node. Well, I'll need some engine power to help. Okay... And stop. Let's certainly going to be good enough to bring it back down. All right, there's the moon. Let's be careful here. We won't have this node anyway once we switch to the rover. And let me just control from the rover's controller. Go from here. All right, separation. Okay, but it changed the control point anyway. 
Let me tell it to control from here again. Um, make sure we have no thrust. Activate those. Uh, we just need to point prograde, really. Uh, that's clearly the wrong way. Reverse. I got that one upside down, apparently. Okay, let's make sure this has its transfer to the moon. And then we can proceed with recovering the launcher. So here we go. We'll also be able to assess the balance of the sparks here. Well... It's using roll, but not the pitch and yaw. The pitch and yaw would be what it would use if uh, the sparks were imbalanced on the center of mass. So I think we're okay. Let's just keep an eye on this and set the moon as a target again. So our launcher will have to come back from that orbit. Now I would like it to come back down on land. That's what the landing gear was for, but we can't super guarantee that. Incidentally, it came up in the comments, but I should make it clear. I never turned to the base via the tracking station. That would almost certainly cause everything to explode or hop up or do bad things. I only ever get to the base in flight. And so if you're having trouble and you're wondering how I managed to keep this base intact, well, it's because I never do a scene change to the base. Okay, uh, that's... Oop. Okay, there we go. Now we're too far away from the launcher to turn directly to it. I think the time it takes for this to get over to that periapsis one day is longer than the time it will take the launcher to get back into the atmosphere, so we will control the launcher. Indeed. Oh gosh. No, oh, it destroyed itself in a million pieces. I should have saved first. And it's going very fast. Ah, game. Why must you do these things to me? It was a nice launcher. It had parachutes and things. I, I guess we can get rid of stuff in the tracking station now. Maybe we'll have we'll have a dedicated launch with it just to test the launcher. We'll only follow the launcher to see what happens, and we'll dump the rover. But we'll do that later. Default name 40 is apparently our mission. Now, would it have been better to turn to it from the tracking station? I don't know. Maybe. That was some rapid disintegration. I taunted the Kraken with this. I did. Every single parachute's its own part now. Some of them look like they're going to impact Kerbin anyway. The parachutes would survive that <laughs> if they deploy, right? I haven't really tried to uh, rename. Let's focus on default name 40. And I'm going to try to rename again. This is the snail. Something made an explosion sound while I was typing. And it made a, the thunk sound. But I don't know what that was. <laughs> um... The dunk, right? The, the, the music. I've named it the snail, but that's not the snail. I wanted this to be the snail. I focused on default name 40. Hold on. This is... Let me focus. No. Focus. I don't know which one is... Which one is it? Okay, that one doesn't have the encounter. This is what I wanted to be, the snail. This was the snail launch. Let me focus. This was the snail launch. Okay, this with the encounter there. Focus. Focus game is the snail. Right, right. Renaming works great. <laughs> it keeps renaming this thing. I don't know what that is. But this is the one with the encounter. And it stays default name 40. No. Renaming sucks. <laughs> well, at least it didn't explode when I turned to it. Let's count our blessings. Alright, so on we go. I think that's a good enough inclination that we're approaching with. 
faces once again immediately going into darkness. I think we'll try and go straight to it so that it will still be in light if we can. It might already be in the dark by the time we get there. Yeah, somebody comments had said, well, you're just renaming it wrong, you're supposed to focus on it. Well, nope, that doesn't work. We probably have more fuel than we need for landing. Yeah, it's right on the edge of darkness there. We'll see. Okay, intense music has started. This doesn't have a huge amount of thrust weight ratio. We barely have enough thrust weight ratio for the moon. I think we should land somewhat away from the base and then drive in. Yeah, we might be landing too far from it. I mean, uh, going too far. I don't feel like this is a good thing to do the topple over method to get to the base with, like we did with the other rover, because it's got the reactor there that's going to break off and we have no solar panels. So I've basically designed this to be unable to do that. Besides, the reaction wheel would probably be too weak. Yeah, it's really tight. I've just been full thrust continuously here. I think we'll be alright, but it's a bit nerve-wracking. I should put headlights on this. I always forget the lights. I'll try and push a little bit towards the base. Okay, I think this is close enough. I want to drive in. So, I'm going to cut the horizontal velocity and just plop in. Plop down to the surface at this location. Oh, now we're completely enveloped in shadow. Now, previously with the other rover, we only managed to get it to work after we turned back to it. It did the tumbling but then operated properly after I went back to the rover. But then we don't want to do a scene change anywhere near the base. So maybe this is far enough, I don't know. Or maybe everything will hop up and destroy itself. Hmm. We'll certainly save first. Well, some sideways velocity shouldn't be too bad for the wheels. Okay, cut. I think we're on the ground. Let me apply the brakes. We also don't want to do this in the dark. So, I am going to save. I'm gonna go to the Space Center and come back to it and see what happens. We may see explosions in the distance. We may not. Okay, time warping. Let's see what happens. Okay, no, nothing seems to have happened at the base. But we might be far enough away. I think like 500 meters might be safe. Okay, I wanted to invert the steering on here. I hadn't done that in the VAB. I had just done it while we were driving around. Don't know what we want to do with the traction or suspension right now. We'll leave it on auto for now and feel it out. I don't know if it's going to drive properly. We should control from here, of course. Right. Now we appear to be moving forward normally. We probably don't want to go 50 meters per second. Actually, I wanted to go around the moon with a rover. That's right. In a later video, maybe we'll drive this away from the base and see how fast it can go on the moon's surface without dying. Or with dying, I mean, you know, eventually. Uh, we have to put, push the limits with Jebgar Kerman here, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, Jebgar will be our Mooner Evil Knievel or whatever. Sort of make, it sort of feels like an ant now. Oh no! Things are blowing up. No! Oh, no! Hmm. Was it always going to blow up? Was it because of the tracking station? 
Where is default name 28 even going? If we had landed directly at it, would have it all exploded? We'll definitely load the save. And then we'll drive to it immediately from the loaded save. It'll be in the dark though. I don't think it's going to be great at driving on, <laughs> on the moon exactly. There are a lot of bigger bumps on the moon than that. But we want to know which are the modules that survive the best, right? Well, this is going to be a test now. We'll see which ones decide to destroy themselves and which ones survived. Well, let's get rid of all that and maybe we can take a look. Amazingly, the light tower is sort of tilted. It, it's sort of off to one side, but it's okay. The the big sphere is all right. I think there's been some damage to the lower line modules that I thought were safe. Our solar array seems to be all over the place. I think the other rover might not have wanted to coexist with this rover. So the two tallest things are weirdly sort of okay, it looks like. Now it's only, it's a discrete point where everything decides to explode, right? It doesn't continue. There's a particular location, a particular distance away where it all goes awry. This is, has lost a couple of extra legs, but it's still standing, weirdly. The soul ray. See, uh, maybe if I can click the root part somewhere. There. Our controller. We've lost most of the solar panels on this. Again, I'm gonna load the save to undo this. But we've lost most of the solar panels here. I think I'm going to have to... I can't double click on them because I can't really get to any particular part that it likes to go to. Well, okay, there. I managed it. This was the sideways one. The sideways one's doing alright. Uh, there's something there. That one's buried in the surface. I think... Yeah, that's another one of these, but it's actually buried in the surface a bit. That one survived. The two that were next to each other with the Mark II parts are no good. Uh, they, they, well... Some of it has survived, but other bits have turned into separate pieces. That's one of the Mark II, that's a Mark II. Val's pod actually seems to be alright. Can I double click on it? I'm double clicking very furiously. Okay. It seems like when I hit the... It was like a fuel tank that worked. But Val's is alright, but has lost some landing legs. So everything basically lost some pieces. Some modules survived, but weirdly the thing that I thought would le be least likely to survive, this thing with the sphere, and landed on the nerves, that thing is the most stable. Alright, let me load the save. Okay, so much as I hate to do this, we're going to approach in the dark having lo loaded the save. And the question is whether we'll still have stuff explode. If we do, we'll load the save and we'll just go with the save and drive it somewhere else and see like how well it can do in other places around the moon instead of driving it to the base. We've already seen the effect it can have on the base. <laughs> I think if we had landed directly in the midst of the base, it would be okay. Okay, about 800 meters on average. Uh, things are exploding. Same, same things, it seems. Oh, I mean, there's two big explosions, and again, this one is sort of going into the ground here. I don't know if it's called the same, I don't remember what the name was, but maybe. Default name 28? We'll have to review the video. I think one thing is, there, there's a default name 40 there, and this is called default name 40 as well. Is that a pro- maybe that's a problem. Right? Isn't this called Default Name 40? Hold on. We'll, we'll load a save afterwards. Let me just uh, put on the brakes. We'll, we'll park for a sec. Uh, it seems like going to the track and station and come back. Well, maybe it'll do more harm, but who knows. Let me just see, because I thought this was Default Name 40. See, we've got 
two default name 40s. We've got one there and one there. One of them is the rover. But I don't know if that causes a problem or not. Let me once again try to rename vessel. Focus on that default name 40. I don't know if it's the right one, but let's say the snail. Okay, I've, uh, I've changed this name in theory. Is it still called the snail? It's not called the snail anymore. <laughs> it's, like, it's called default name 40, apparently. Yep, still doesn't work. But yeah, I don't think we can drive the rover over to the base. I'm gonna time warp in the tracking station and see what the exact damage was to see if it's exactly the same thing. I think that might be interesting. But otherwise, we'll pick up from the save that we had and not drive to the base. I don't know, the base might just destroy itself no matter what when we arrive with something else. We lost some electric charge somehow, even though we have a reactor on. It's not like we're relying on solar panels. Default name 28 is buried. And we are approaching the base to see what actually is left this time. I think the big sphere on top of the nerves is still fine but maybe it's like a clock like after a while the modules get weaker and weaker so it just so happens that the big sphere on top of the nerves is the most recent part to arrive and therefore was the most resilient but after a while it would also explode like this uh time bomb in every one of them but then the solar panels weren't that long ago. Val's pod still seems alright. This one still seems buried. It seems buried in exactly the same way. The one really close to us. And the one on the side is still on the side, and that row of Mark 1 cabins is still the same. Oh wait, that, that one's moving again. <laughs> okay, I take it back. The Mark 2 ones are also in disarray again. But now the light lamppost has totally toppled. The solar panels over here are in better shape overall, I think. I'll save the post-carnage version just for the heck of it, but we won't pick up from it. So yeah, same buried thing over there. Same situation with these two. They, they moved somewhat, I can tell. And then the Mark IIs are all sort of messed up. This one's sort of buried a bit. But Bows is okay. Actually has more landing legs this time. But this thing has toppled. And the nerve... Nerve sphere has survived. We've lost... Um... I, I don't know. I think we lost one solar panel on that... On this side in the middle. But otherwise, it's much better off than it was previously. We sort of arrived. But I'll restore the one without the rover approaching. But then again, maybe the base is already doomed. Maybe it's something that's already built in, and whenever we approach the base now, it'll just be horrible. We only have loss of control there, but it doesn't say that everything is destroyed. But maybe it's all clipping into the ground already, and we only find out when we get close to it. But I'm gonna go back to the Space Center and save there too. And then we'll pick up from there next time. And we won't approach with the rover, but we'll land something else at the base to see what happens. Okay, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.